Welcome back to Graybeard's Garage, everybody. I'm Graybeard. Got something a little different today. Uh, not a whole lot I can do right now with the bikes and whatnot because we have an absolute swamp here on my property, thanks to all the rain we've been having. We got some places up to six inches of water standing. But what we're going to work on today is I need to make a new burn barrel. Something I'm not used to again here in the deep south is that everything rusts and what i failed to do on these first burn barrels that i put up about a year ago is i did not raise these off the ground as you can see with the heat and everything and plus the fact it rains on them these barrels are rusting out so what i'm going to do is we're going to end up getting all the ashes and everything out of those and we're going to end up scrapping those so what i'm going to do this time is over here on the other side of my shop i was digging around and the previous owners have left some concrete blocks behind so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up a couple of these concrete blocks to where i can raise it up off the ground and uh also i'm going to put some holes in the bottom of the barrel so that it, when it does rain everything can leak out uh, hopefully keep it from rusting as fast you know i don't mind replacing these once a year that's fine they're only about ten dollars a piece but here's the barrel that we're going to use a little bit of surface rust on it but no big deal it's been thoroughly cleaned out this one used to have uh, epoxy resin in it so first burn is just going to be a couple pieces of wood that way if there's any other resin left over in it it's going to burn right out and then more than likely it's going to burn the paint off and then i might go back and uh do some barbecue paint on it that might withstand the heat a little bit better so i'm gonna go ahead and go into time lapse over this it's going to be pretty detailed what i'm basically going to be doing is be putting some drain holes in the bottom of this for when it's up on the concrete and then i'm going to put holes all over this thing to the top and bottom that way allow airflow into it then also over here i've got a lid that i'm going to punch a bunch of holes in that way i can have something to keep any embers or anything from flying up because in the summertime it gets kind of dry around here and things can catch fire especially when you got a bunch of grass out here like this so we want to keep the uh, fire risk to a minimum yeah thanks to all the rain and everything having to be able to get the mower out here you see my burn pile over there is getting out of hand i really need to get it mowed and get the weed eater back at it because normally right about here around this area about 10 feet around i keep that down to bare dirt but it seems like every time it rains it's like miracle grow out here and for those of you who are wondering the reason we have burn barrels is i live out in the county i'm about 10 miles outside of town and trash pickup out here is expensive so what we do is anything that can burn safely, paper products, cardboard, things of that nature, we burn. Everything else, plastics and glass and metal, we turn in for recycling. And you see over here next to my trailer, uh, looks like something got into that one. Oh, there's a bag of plastics actually the sun might be breaking these down already so yeah it looks like i'll be getting busy here so they've been out here for a little while so we got a bag of plastics a bag of aluminum i think it may be tin cans and stuff of that nature in that bag and then we got plastic in this one so what we'll do here is haul these off the recycling center so it looks like i'm gonna be re-bagging here soon so get them bagged up put them on the trailer and get them hauled out so other than that everything else we have we burn all right so let's get started on this thing i'm gonna get my drill and my bits and we're gonna get started all right so we got the bottom drilled out it's probably about 20 30 or so holes here just kind of put them at random no in particular pattern but the main purpose of these holes are going to be for drainage more than anything but also you know they act as airflow from the bottom 
Because uh, if you don't have enough airflow through it, you don't get a complete burn. You end up with a pile of really thick ash and or unburned paper and cardboard on the bottom. So that's as far as I'm going to go with the bottom there. Like I said, it's going to be sitting about three or four inches off the ground on some concrete blocks. And hope they'll solve my rusting rock problems. So let's get this thing on its side and start drilling some holes down the length of it. All right, so I got all the side of it pretty well perforated all the way around. Just went at random. And I got it pretty well perforated. So now the bottom is perforated and all the way around the sides are perforated. So I brought the lid back out and this is going to be uh, perforated also quite a bit. And this is just to keep any embers that might rise up out of there, especially like when you're burning cardboard or paper. Some embers tend to fly out because of the rising heat. So I'm going to go ahead and get this knocked out, get a bunch of holes punched in the lid, and then we'll get over here and get it set up. later I'm gonna come back and mow everything down and dig me out a bare spot there's enough water around here so I can do a test burn without too much trouble I uh, moved my concrete blocks from my little lawn tractor here it just seems weigh about 80 plus pounds a piece so I didn't want to try them about 20 30 yards over here so let's get these laid out so what I'm gonna do is put these down so I can suspend that barrel off the ground take advantage of the holes I put in the bottom for drainage and airflow so we'll put one here, then I'll put another one over here, like so. And this one is going to go down here, pretty much like that. What we're going to do now is get this barrel up on top. This way I got an air gap down here. Now it looks like you got pieces of uh, resin in the bottom of this barrel still. That's why I was drilling. Get those out. I bet you I'll pick those up and throw them back in the fire so we can burn them off. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to scare up a little bit of wood here and uh, get this fire going and we'll start doing some trash. What we got smoking here is the uh, epoxy resin that's on the bottom of the lid that was still there and the paint is still burning off. Once you get the heat high enough for a full combustion, you'll have little to no smoke. And that's why I got smoke right now. I threw that lid up there. <coughs> oh, the wind changed on me. If I can move that little bit like a fire by it down just a little bit. No, it's still going pretty good. Might have choked it out. Yeah, I think I might have to push some more holes in that lid. It seems to be choking it out a little bit too much. But yeah, that's what it is. You need to add some more holes in its perimeter. 
we'll put a whole bunch more holes in that lid. It really needs to be like a grate so you got free airflow through it. You know, there are some uh, burn boxes you can get out there that are like a stainless steel box. And uh, they got a bunch of slots in it. And that's basically what they're doing, the same thing here. Instead of slots, I got holes. So I just got to keep adding holes so I can get a complete burn out of it, even with the lid on. But yeah, that's what's smoking right now is what's left of the epoxy resin that was in the barrel. And also the paint that was left on the lid there. So I've been out here maybe five minutes of the burn and everything's just about burned out. But I'm getting good airflow to the bottom. You see, I got flame all the way to the bottom of it, which is good. My problem with these other ones is that I had no air coming through the bottom. Therefore, I didn't get a full burn and I was dumping out ashes. As you can see, this whole pile right here, about every third or fourth burn, I got to dump out a pile of ashes out of the bottom of it. So I'm hoping this way I can get a good solid burn. Yeah, there's still paint and resin burning off that lid. You can see it coming up from the surface there. But it's a super, super hot fire right now. As I said, I got a piece of 2 by 4 in the bottom burning, and I put all that cardboard in there. So that's the trick. You want to get as hot as a fire as you can, and that way you get full incineration. And if you've got enough airflow and enough heat, you can burn just about anything with virtually no smoke. See, the smoke's calmed down now, and it'll be almost no smoke by the time it's done burning off all that epoxy and also all the uh, paint that's on the barrel. I said I may come back later and put some of the high temp barbecue paint on it. That might last a little while. But this barrel definitely gets hotter than uh, what a barbecue grill uh, would. So let me know down below what you think. Uh, you got any suggestions, any experience doing this yourself? What works for you, what didn't? Let me know. This is what we do out here. So I'm going to scrap these two barrels that are over here. Get them hauled off and scrapped. And it'll probably give me a couple more barrels and if this works out great i do have another one over here that i wanted for another project but if need be uh, i'll do it with that one too but normally i can get all my burning done in about 20 30 minutes as we do it about every four or five days out here just so it doesn't pile up so thanks for joining me catch you next time